So how to store and incubate semi-annual killifish eggs. Now most semi-annual killifish are absolutely stunning little fish and generally very peaceful. Um, they are sometimes known as switch spawners and this means that they'll change their breeding habits according to the environment that they find themselves in. Now for this video we will concentrate on uh, mop spawners. In the wild they would normally lay their eggs on plants but uh, when they are purposely bred in the aquaria you should provide mops for them. Some of the species are classified as switch spawners and they will either lay their eggs on mops or if they choose they'll lay it in peat. Now normally in the wild this would be the muddy bottom of a pond or river stream. Now, if you're going to water hatch your eggs, this takes approximately two weeks. And if you're going to incubate them in peat, this can take up to four weeks. Now, there are several ways to incubate your eggs. Now, my personal favorite is to pick the eggs from the mops and water incubate them. Now, this is just a little warning when breeding your killifish. Now, these fish are generally peaceful. I've actually successfully kept them in community tanks. And in fact, I've even managed to keep killifish in my cichlid tanks, where they sometimes dominate. So they can hold their own, but when breeding, it's best to breed them on their own, in their own species tank. Now, during breeding, the males become extremely aggressive, and they will actively seek out other males and females, and they will kill these males and when seeking out these females to breed they can be relentless and you could end up with dead females very quickly so i normally take two or three females for every male now as i said before there's a several way of breeding your killifish but for this purpose we're going to concentrate on mop spawners now normally with mop spawners you will water incubate your eggs so when picking eggs from the mop, you need to remove the mop from the, the tank. Just gently squeeze out the mop until it's dry. Um, leave the mop to dry for a couple of minutes because it's, it's almost impossible to see the eggs when they're wet. Completely see-through. You'll never find them. Now, depending on your eyesight, now mine's terrible. I also suggest that you wear a pair of glasses with uh, three times magnification. This makes it a lot easier to see the eggs. I also suggest that you wash your hands thoroughly before handling the mops. I mean, it's easy to carry over contaminants and chemicals onto the eggs in the mop. Carefully examine the mop for eggs and gently picking them between your fingers and placing uh, the eggs into a small container with water from a tank. Now, just a word of warning here. That if you have several killifish species and you are checking all of them for the eggs on the mops just remember that these eggs can actually stick to your fingers and hands now when you're sorting through the eggs and placing them into the containers now sometimes these rogue eggs will find their way into containers that weren't meant for them so ultimately when the fish eventually hatch you'll be very confused as to why you've got different fry in with your batch so just be very careful. Now, another important thing is when you place your eggs in your little containers, remember to label them. Can't tell you how many times I've had to rush off, forgot to label my eggs, and a few days later, I couldn't remember which ones they were. Now, just remember when you're keeping your eggs in these water trays, it's very easy for the bacteria to spread very fast. This bacteria will kill all your eggs. This happens because bacteria is almost always present in water and they multiply really rapidly in this stagnant little pot of water. The process generally starts because some of the eggs will be unfertilized and they'll spread from the unfertilized eggs to the fertilized eggs. Now I keep my eggs in shallow little pots at room temperature away from direct light and I check the eggs every day for fungus and I normally do a water change. Once the initial dead eggs are removed and the eggs start showing signs of development, then the eggs are less susceptible to fungusing. 
Now many killifish breeders use acroflavin or malachite green to control the bacteria and fungus. Now I personally use methylene blue. It acts as an antibiotic and it also helps to oxidate the water. Now the best remedy against fungus attacks is to remove the dead eggs immediately and keep oxygenating the shallow trays. When you're sure the eggs are healthy, then uh, you can stop treating with these antibiotics. Now, incubation normally takes two weeks, depending on the temperature. If you've been collecting the eggs over the period of a couple of weeks, then you have to remember that not all the fry will hatch at the same time. While fry within a few days of each other will get along fine, after about three or four days, then the older fry will start cannibalizing the younger ones. Now, I know that many breeders don't like using this method as they don't like the fry of various sizes and sometimes the egg losses can be very high if you don't keep on top of it. But for me, the eggs are easier to monitor and they hatch a lot faster than using other methods. Now, another method is picking mops and incubating them on peat. Now with this method, you pick the eggs from the mop and place in a shallow tray with antibiotics. Now, while some breeders will use damp peat, I personally use damp cocoa fiber. Now, you can buy this in all the big pet stores and it comes in bricks. And what you actually have to do is soak the bricks in water overnight and you'll have the cocoa fiber. Now, it's important that you use containers that don't let light in. The light will cause your eggs to fungus very, very quickly. Now, I use a pipette and I collect the eggs from the tray and then drop them gently onto the damp cocoa fiber. Now, depending on temperature, the incubation can take up to four weeks. Check the container weekly for any dead eggs and they must be removed. Many breeders use this method as the eggs are separated from each other and contamination is difficult to spread from one egg to the other. It is important to keep the peat or the cocoa fiber damp but not too wet. Otherwise, this will cause the eggs to fungus and the fungus will spread once again. The container must be kept sealed to keep a steady humidity and temperature. Now, the biggest advantage of this method is that all the eggs can be left until they've all lied up. So when they hatch, all the fry will be the same size. The timing can be critical because if you leave the eggs too long, then the eggs just simply dissolve into the peat and you'll lose the entire batch. Now, I don't like this method as the hatch rate can suffer with particular species. It's also important that you do not try to re-dry the eggs with this method. This will definitely kill the rest of the eggs. You've got to remember that these aren't annual killifish that lay the eggs in mud where the eggs require different diapause periods. With these semi-annual mob spawners, you've only really got one chance to hatch these eggs. So if you try and re-dry them, I'm afraid that's just a waste of time. It's not going to work. Now, a similar method is if you pick the mops of the eggs, then actually place the eggs inside the peat rather than on top. Now, you can also do this with peat spawners that have laid the eggs in the peat. So if the Achilles have been laying the eggs inside the peat, or you just want to try a different method of incubation, then you can place the eggs into the peat for the incubation. What to do is, if the killies have mop spawned, then remove the eggs as normal and place the eggs into the wet peat directly. Make sure that the peat is really wet. Now, if they've spawned over the peat, then just simply remove the peat container from the tank and pour the contents into a fine mesh net and gently squeeze it dry until most of the water is gone. You want to get it like pipe tobacco. You want it slightly damp, but you don't want it wet because what you want to do is dry store the peat. Now you place this peat into a small container and you store as before. So you keep the eggs for approximately four weeks and you check the container at about the third or fourth week and see if the eggs have started dying up. If they've eyed up, then just wet the eggs. Place all the peat into a shallow container of aquarium water, up to a depth of about two to three inches. Now, some breeders will remove the fry as soon as they hatch into a separate fry container. 
claiming that they said it from the peat, which protected the eggs while they were incubating, they will now kill the fry as the fry hatch because the water is too acidic. That's for exactly this reason that I use cocoa fiber. It's a lot less acidic, more neutral. And it encourages infusoria when you first wet it. Now I leave the fry in this container for about a week. This gives the fry an immediate food source. Now, although this method produces a higher success rate in hatching the fry, it becomes more problematic to move the fry from the cocoa fiber. Now, as soon as you try and remove the fry from the container, they'll dart inside the cocoa fiber, making it almost impossible to remove. Now, another method is to store the entire mop from the tank. You squeeze the mop dry, and then place the entire mop into a plastic bag and seal it. And then you keep it in the dark for about three to four weeks. After about three or four weeks, you check the mop, and if you can see any eggs eyeing up, then you place it into a container of water, and hatch is normal. Now, not too many people are successful with this method. There are a very few species that actually do require this method. Um, and it's hard to hatch the eggs any other way. Now, for me, I don't like this method. There are several reasons for this. One of the reasons is that food can get trapped inside these mops. And when sealed inside a plastic bag, the bacteria count can become very high, thus causing the eggs to fungus. Another reason is that when you take the mop out of the tank, you don't always know which eggs are unfertilized. So they will naturally fungus inside the bag anyway. And because the mop is wet, the fungus will spread from egg to egg. Now another method that I know of is to use a species only semi-permanent setup. In this scenario, you would set up a small fish tank, uh, well planted and well filtered. And just let the colony get on with it. Um, let the small group of fish just breed away and just leave the eggs in the main tank. Now, eventually they will just hatch. Now, while some species don't eat their own fry, most species will, so, so your survival rate won't be that good. Now, what some people do is they'll let the fish breed away and after about two or three weeks, they'll remove the adults so that when the fry hatch, um, they won't be preyed upon. The uh, only problem with this is that if you need to feed micro foods, especially with some of the very, very small species, then this becomes really difficult in a complete setup that is heavily planted. Now, while some of the fry will find food in there, many will just starve to death. So. That's all the different ways that you can hatch mop spawners. Um, there may be a few other ways. Now, as I've said before, my preferred way is just to collect the eggs and keep them in shallow pots of water. And that way I can keep a very close eye on them. Now, if you find that water incubation doesn't work for you, okay, don't give up because sometimes what happens is that young pairs the eggs are not fertilized properly, so it can take three or four attempts at laying eggs before you start getting a healthy batch come through. So just because the eggs are fungusing in your water containers doesn't mean to say that you've done something wrong. It could just be that the male didn't fertilize the eggs properly. But with age, um, you'll find that your batches of eggs will be larger and more fertile. So don't give up on this method.